Hi everyone. In this video tutorial, we're going to look at natural resources in the Caribbean. Hence, we say a Caribbean perspective. So stay tuned. So what is a natural resource? Natural resources are materials from the earth that are used to support life and meet people's needs. Any natural substances that humans can be considered a natural resource, such as oil, coal, natural gas, metal, stone, and sand are natural resources. Other natural resources are air, sunlight, soil, and water. Those are known as biotic resources because they sustain by themselves. Animal, birds, fish, and plants are all natural resources as well, but they need the biotic resources in order to thrive. So some animals need to live in soil, some live in water, plants need air and sunlight. Animals need air, sunlight, soil, and water, right? Natural resources are used to make food, fuel, and raw materials for the production of goods. All of the food that people eat comes from plants and animals, and natural resources such as coal, natural gas, and oil provide heat, light, and power. Imagine there is no fuel, no forms of fuel, biofuel, electric, or um, natural gas fuel, then we wouldn't be able to operate our cars, right? Cars run on gas, which is a, comes from a natural resource form from fossil fuels. Natural resources are also the raw materials for the making that we use every day from our toothbrush to our lunch boxes, our clothes, cars, television, computers, and refrigerators. Remember, trees provide many, trees provide many resources for us and we use all these to make raw materials. A tree we can get glue from, we can make forms of plastic, we can get paper, we can get furniture, we can get our toothbrush, right? Forms of plastic can be converted to making electronics in cars, television, computers, and even refrigerators. So when we speak about natural resources, we need to understand that they are both renewable and non-renewable resources. Here we look at what is a renewable resource and a non-renewable resource. The word renew means we can use it over and over. It will come back as new and then we can use it again. Renewable resources are those natural resources such as trees, water, sun, and wind that can be replenished at about the same rate at which they are used. Renewable resources, however, can be depleted if not managed properly or consumed. Or consumed. For example, trees is a renewable resource. But if we cut down trees and we don't plant back trees, we can lead to its depletion. Water is a renewable resource. Remember, we have the water cycle, taking up water, tree evaporation, condensing it, and bringing it down in the form of precipitation, which can be hail, snow, or rain. When This is a natural cycling of water, but when humans pollute the water, through various means, whether it be agricultural, industrial, recreational, we can lead to a depletion in the water. Non-renewable resources now are those resources that are depleted more quickly and cannot be regenerated, right? So fossil fuels like oil and natural gas were for millions of years. Once mined and used completely, non-renewable resources are gone forever. So it's a type of resource, if we interfere with it, we use it, we convert it to materials that we use every day, then we cannot use it again. They can regenerate. It's not that they cannot regenerate, but the regeneration pr procedure for non-renewable resources like oil and gas takes hundreds of um, and millions of years, right? The fossil fuel that we get now was a re as a result then of dead sea creatures that were fossilized in rock and over a period of over a hundred years then. So this is uh, just just an inch, not even a, not an inch, more like a mile of what it's supposed to be, right? It takes millions of years to generate. So we can say it is renewable, but it's not readily available to use like trees, water, and sun. It do not 
will generate the same rate at which we use it. If we use it now, generations to come will, will not have the benefit of using non-renewable resources. Hence, we have to be sustainable. Renewable resources can grow quickly, produce fast, and we can replenish it the same rate as which we use it. But non-renewable resources takes millions of years to get back to where it was in order for somebody to use it. So we finish oil and gas today. In one million years time, maybe you to sea creatures constantly dying and fossil fossilizing and the whole process taking place again, maybe a million years from now, somebody will be able to use it. No, a million years is many years, right? We're talking about animals died in dinosaur age. We are not getting oil and gas from. So think about it. Think about the reason we need to sustain. So natural resources are used to make products. So people use an abundance of the resources to survive in the continually developing world. We use trees to make paper, furniture, and fuel. We make cotton. We use cotton to make clothing. We use oil and petroleum to make plastic and fuel. We use natural gas for fuel. We can also use coal for fuel. Iron ore is used to make steel products such as cans and bridges. Bauxite ore is aluminum products such as cans, car parts. Gold is used to make jewelry and dental material. Copper is used to make wire, coins, and electrical equipment. Manganese is used to make steel and cast iron. Cobalt is used to make steel, jet engine parts, and cutting tools. Platinum is used for air pollution control and telecommunication equipment and some jewelry. Chromium is stainless steel, green glass, and leather treatment, and diamonds are used for jewelry making and mechanical equipment. Now, some of these natural resources are very expensive and can generate good revenue for a country. However, some of these natural resources are renewable and some are non-renewable. So for example, trees, cotton, and diamond, for example, can be renewable, but the non-renewable such as oil and petroleum, natural gas, um, maybe gold to some extent, because all these things are created in a different way compared to a tree, can ex be extinct once you use it up, right? Can be extinct for at least this lifetime. Renewable resources in the Caribbean. Now the Caribbean is located in an area close to the equator where we always have sunlight energy is surrounded by water. The Caribbean is made up of islands and each island is surrounded by water, right? In the Caribbean, we have agricultural land being a renewable resource. So agricultural land is used for the production of crops or for rare and livestock animals. Agricultural production takes place on a commercial basis or large scale production where we produce crops for sale and for further production of goods and services. And then at a subsistence basis or small scale production where we might produce for the local market or community scale. Agriculture is important to the Caribbean because it contributes to food security. It raises foreign exchange earnings through exportation of the produce. It provides employment directly in production and in secondary and tertiary industries. So I can pick a tomato and then I can sell it to a company that makes ketchup and they can make ketchup and sell it as a final product in a grocery, which is a tertiary service. Crops produced are cocoa, banana, sugarcane, citrus fruits, rice, coconut, and this is just to name a few. The crops grown in the Caribbean are abundant, right? We have small scale um, farming, large scale farming. We also have long-term and short-term crops. Long-term long -term crops are known to be banana, cocoa, sugarcane, but short-term crops are like tomatoes, lettuce, cucumbers, melangen, and so forth. So we also have long-term and short-term crops. Marine life is another renewable resource that we find in the Caribbean. The Caribbean Sea supports a rich variety of marine life. Consumption of fish, crabs, and mussels provide an important source of animal protein. Fishing and aquaculture 
industries provide employment in all three economic sectors. So we can extract the fish from the water by fishing. This is primary. We can sell our fish secondary, or we can sell our fish to a company that probably cans fish, and we call it tertiary. Marine life also contributes to the economy through ecotourism. So that book reef in Tobago, people spend money to come to Tobago to see the book reef, to go snorkeling, to see the fishes and the marine creatures that lay below the waters. Sports fishing activities and events also follow in the Caribbean. Water is another renewable resource in the Caribbean and we can say we are surrounded by it. Water resources are important for many reasons. Humans use water to keep themselves hydrated, supply moisture to crops, perform domestic tasks, task and generate power. Now water is something that is needed for sustenance of human life. So even though it is a renewable resource, we need to take care of it, meaning we don't pollute, we don't account for disposing chemicals, toxic chemicals in it. We try to conserve water. So there are water treatment plants that will capture rainfall to pass through pipes to fill households. But at the same time, our action of pollution can severely tamper our water resources. In some Caribbean country, there are forests. Forests are especially useful resources since a wide range of products are made using material from trees. What is used in construction furniture making, etc. Some trees provide food, some provide material using the production of many products such as rubber gloves, medicine, and paper. Forested areas not only provide a good source of material for building and construction and making products, but it can also contribute to a healthy balance in the environment because tree trees are known to absorb the carbon dioxide content in the air and release oxygen, which is vital to human beings. Beaches, on the other hand, is another renewable resource and Caribbean islands are filled, uh, surrounded by beaches, right? We normally go to the beach, we have fun at the beach, but the beach is a popular tourist re recreational ground where we can get money from it and also provide access to sea or for fleets of fishing boats. Right, through the beaches is where the fishermen will dock in order to bring in their goods from fishing. They provide a good source of sand, which is useful for construction. But just like any other resource, we cannot deplete it. Right, you cannot dredge beach sand and take it for construction all the time because it can lead to coastal erosion and damages. Same way, we cannot cut down all the trees and just make stuff from it because these trees serve a purpose, it serves a healthy balance of our atmosphere. So instead of cutting down trees, while we cut down trees, we should think about planting back trees because they are renewable. So I want you to take down this question. For six Caribbean countries, make a list of the natural resources belonging to that country. For example, Trinidad and Tobago, you can say oil and gas, well, which was once. Jamaica has bauxite, Guyana has bauxite. Take six countries and tell me, they'll, or make a list of the natural resources belonging to that country. Throughout this video, I would really appreciate if you pause and make your notes because these are clear, concise notes that you can use to study from and you can apply to your own school exams and general exams. So we are speaking about renewable resources, but we also need to know about renewable energy resources. And these are resources that comes naturally, right? So what is a renewable energy source? A renewable energy source means energy that is sustainable, something that can't run out or is endless, like the sun. When you hear the term alternative energy, it is usually referring to renewable energy sources too. It means sources of energy that are alternative to the most commonly used non-sustainable sources like coal, right? So using renewable energy options is a, is a healthy way to go for our environment. It ensures that we have for future generations. 
There are different types of renewable energy resources. The first type is solar energy. Sunlight is one of our planet's most abundant and freely available energy resource. The, the amount of solar energy that reaches the Earth's surface in one hour is more than the planet's total energy requirements for a whole year. So if we, if we manipulate this and create devices that can capture sunlight and produce electricity, such as solar power or solar powering, we can use that to power up our household at a cheaper rate than what we pay our leading electrical company for. Wind energy, on the other hand, is a plentiful source of clean energy. Wind farms are increasingly familiar site in the United Kingdom, with wind power making an ever-increasing contribution to the national grid. To harness electricity from in wind energy, turbines are used to dr drive generators, which then feed electricity into the national grid. So solar energy is popular in the Caribbean. We are filled with sun, sand, and sea. The sun we can harness to be very abundant and we can have renewable energy options. When we speak about hydro energy now, we are talking about a renewable energy resource, hydropower, which is one of the most commercially developed by a building, by building a dam or barrier or a large reservoir can be used to create a control flow of water that will drive turbine generating electricity. Normally, hydro comes from, well, hydro means water. It comes from hydrogen, which is the chemical term for water. Now, we can use natural features such as waterfalls and the plunge pools from waterfalls to generate electricity. Did you know that hydro energy is produced at the Niagara Falls and part of Canada uses hydro energy corporation? There's also tidal energy. This is another form of hydro energy that uses twice daily tidal currents to drive turbine generators. Now, we have to remember that most of the Caribbean countries are developing countries. So some of these technologies we might not be exposed to as yet, but we need to work towards sustainability. We have plenty of sun. We have plenty of wind energy from our trade winds. We have hydro energy. We also have tidal energies. Some islands in the Caribbean may not have waterfalls, but for what it's worth, they might have geothermal energy, which is our next option. Geothermal energy is the energy formed by harnessing natural heat from below the Earth's surface in the form of Earth movement. We have magma below the Earth's surface. Geothermal energy can be used to heat homes directly or to generate electricity. We have many Caribbean islands that has a, there are many Caribbean islands that has volcanoes in them, right? And these volcanoes right below have a mag, something called a magma chamber that is filled with hot lava or hot magma, right? When this magma reaches the surface, then it turns into lava. But the fact that there is motion and convection below the Earth's surface, we can generate geothermal energy from this. This is a good option for those volcanic islands, such as Montserrat, St. Vincent, and right our neighboring island, Grenada. There's also biomass energy. This is the conservation of soil, solid fuel made from plant material into electricity. Now, biomass energy can take place in any part of the world once we have the available type of plant to, to harness the energy from. Although fundamentally, biomass involves burning organic materials to produce electricity, and nowadays, this is much cleaner, more efficient energy process. So we have solar energy, wind energy, hydroelectric hydro energy, tidal energy, geothermal energy, and biomass energy as all options we could use here in the Caribbean, given our nature. Here we have a picture now that shows all the energy sources. So we have a wind turbine, we have water, hydropower, we have solar power, geothermal power, biomass. We also have nuclear, natural gas, oil and coal, but they are called non-renewable energy sources. But for way forward and sustainability, we need our renewable energy sources up and running. Imagine the houses in Trinidad and Tobago 
has natural solar power, solar power terminals that can generate electricity to each household. Imagine we don't have to pay a company um, an exorbitant amount of money for electricity every month because we get it naturally from the sun. How cool is that, right? How economic, economically friendly is that? So these are all our options we need to ensure that we know about, right? We need to show, ensure that our development gear towards sustainability. So sustainable development and the use of resources, right? Sustainability is a practice of using natural resources responsibly today so that they are available for our future generations tomorrow. We can achieve, achieve a sustainability via many activities and we can start by doing it now. We can achieve sustainability from proper farming practices. We can achieve sustainability by deforestation preventative program. So if we plant trees, basically have a balance. If you cut a tree, plant a tree. Proper practices in mining and quarrying so that we don't destroy the land. Biofuel as an alternate, alternate fuel to oil and gas. Biofuel comes from plants a plant-based fuel, and we can use this from sugar cane resources. Sugar cane, the burning of sugar cane can produce fuel for us to operate from. We can conserve our wetland and water resources. We can conserve our beaches by not removing sand for construction. We could not overfish to deplete fish population. Basically, humans is the cause for our depletion of many renewable resources, even in the Caribbean. People pollute, we deforestate, and we treat our planet Earth as if it is there forever. We are destroying it. So the best thing to do for sustainable development is, how, is to manage how we use our resources. We always think about the future generation. If you have a plastic bottle, a simple recycling program can help this, right? We need to think for future. Hence the goal for sustainable development. We have to think that we are, develop we are developing nations in the Caribbean. We have not reached developed status. And I think one of the things to indicate that we have reached a developed status is when we achieve sustainable development and our resources maybe renewable or non-renewable, but we need to conserve them for a better tomorrow. So this was the end of this tutorial on natural resources in the Caribbean. And this tutorial also handled all the objectives that you need to know from the social studies syllabus. And I urge you to pause this video and make your notes and answer all questions that I will be posting on this topic in the coming days. We still have to wrap up our human resources but we'll get that on next session. But, but for this session, we are strictly focusing on natural resources in the Caribbean. So thank you for watching this video tutorial. Ensure to pause the video and make notes. Thank you.